In this video we'll take a look at the concept of increasing and decreasing functions and uh, for this graph on the right, for any graph actually, we always speak about that as you go from the left side of the graph towards the right side of the graph. So it's uh, going from left to right. And if you start on the leftmost part of the graph here, and if you go all the way up along here to this point, the graph is going up. So we would say it's an increasing function along here. From this point towards the right, it's also increasing. So if this is the if the x coordinate of that point is a and the x coordinate of this point is b, to the left of a it's increasing, so it's increasing where x is less than a. It's also increasing where x is uh, to the right of b or greater than b. And in between this point and this point, the graph is going down between a and b, so we would say it's decreasing on the interval between a and b. Uh, x is greater than a and less than b is between a and b. Now, if we were to draw a tangent line over here, like this, notice that any tangent line drawn on that yellow part of the graph would be sloping upward. And so any derivative over here would be greater than zero on any part of the graph where it's increasing. And the same thing over here, if we draw any tangent over here on this interval to the right of b, then the derivative is also positive here. Remember, derivative is the same as the rate of change or the slope of a tangent at any point in the graph. If we draw any tangent between a and b, for example like this one, notice it's sloping down. It goes down as you go from left to right, and so the derivative would be negative in there. So a negative derivative means uh, a function is decreasing, a positive derivative mean it means it's increasing. And if we flip over to example one, it says upon what intervals is this function increasing or decreasing? And so we investigate the sign of the derivative to figure where, where it's increasing, where it's decreasing. And so we need to find the derivative of this cubic function. So the derivative of 2x cubed using the power rule, 3 times 2 is 6, decrease the exponent by 1 to 2. The derivative of 9 x, negative 9x squared would be negative 18x. Uh, 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. 2 minus 1 would be 1, so it's negative 18x. The derivative of 12x is just plain old 12. And 2 is a constant, so its derivative would be 0. So there's the derivative. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set that equal to zero because places where the derivative is zero is where it might change sign from negative to positive or positive to negative. And so that's what we need this number line for here. We'll get to that in a moment. Now, setting 6x squared minus 18x plus 12 to zero and solving for x. If we divide both sides of this by 8, by sorry, by 6, uh, the 6 divides out, uh, 6 goes into negative 18, negative 3 times, and 6 goes into 12 twice. And of course, 0 divided by 6 is still 0. So that's a simpler quadratic equation to solve. Now it will factor. Uh, two numbers that add to negative 3 and multiply to 2 would be negative 1 and negative 2. They add to negative 3 and multiply to 2. So that factors into x minus 1 times x minus 2. And now what we would do is set each of those factors to 0. And so if we set x minus 1 to 0 and solve for x, we'll get 1. If we set x minus 2 equal to 0 to solve for x, we'll get 2. So at 1 and at 2 are places where the derivative has a value of 0. So on the number line, I'll put 1 and then 2 here. I'll always put them in order. And so those are the places where the graph has a, um, a derivative of zero, which is actually a local minimum or maximum point. And what we're going to do is investigate the sign of the derivative below 1, and then between 1 and 2, and then above 2. Because if the graph doesn't have a vertical asymptote, this is just a cubic function, where the derivative is zero is the only place that the sign of the derivative can change. So a number below 1, you can take any number you want. If you wanted to put, you know, negative 13 million in place of x, you could. Uh, just, I would usually choose a, a number that's convenient, such as 0. 0 is below 1. 
Okay, so any number in this interval, I'm going to choose 0 and put 0 in place of x in the derivative. Now, in the derivative, not in any simplified form. Um, for example, if I happen to, let's say, factor a negative out of this, then I would actually change the sign of the expression. So use the original derivative expression. So putting 0 in place of x, of course, uh, 0 squared is 0. Negative 18 times 0 is also 0, so we just get 12. So the derivative has a value of 12 at 0. So the 12 isn't important. What's important is the fact that it's positive. We're looking for whether the, the derivative is negative or positive. So in this interval, I'm just going to put a little plus there to, to remind me that it's negative below 1. And then we'll check a number between 1 and 2. And then you can use any number you want. You don't have to use the number right in the middle between 1 and 2. If you wanted to use uh, you know, 1.25 or 1.1, that would still be fine. So putting 1.5 in place of x, 1.5 squared times 6 minus 18 times 1.5 plus 12 uh, works out to negative 1.5. And so the 1.5 part isn't the, isn't the important part. The fact that it's negative is what's important. So that means that between 1 and 2, we have a negative derivative. And then we'll take a number above 2 to the right of 2, for example, 3. And I'll put 3 in place of x. 3 squared times 6 uh, minus 18 times 3 plus 12. And that works out to uh, 12 again, same derivative we got here, actually. So the fact that it's positive is the only important thing for what we're doing here anyway. Now, so notice to the left of 1, we have a positive derivative, and to the right of 2. And so below 1 and above 2, the derivative is positive. So it's increasing on the intervals where x is less than 1, that's that one, and where x is greater than 2, that one. And there's a negative derivative between 1 and 2. So we would say it's decreasing on the interval between 1 and 2. So that's the intervals where it's increasing and where the function is decreasing. In example two, it says use the first derivative, and these blue lines or curves represent the derivative to sketch a function. Now, in this first derivative, uh, first one here in a, the this is the line y equals negative two, or if it's the derivative actually, it would be f prime of x equals negative two. So that's the equation of this is the derivative. We're trying to go sort of back to find what the original function is. Sketch a function. So the derivative of this function is uh, what what we're we're given here. So that's the graph of the derivative would be negative 2. So what you'd have to figure out is, well, what would I differentiate to get a derivative of negative 2? And if you think about the basic differentiation rules, it's negative 2x that you would differentiate to get negative 2. So see, this is the derivative. Notice the prime there. So the original function must be negative 2x. Now what the plus b represents is the fact that we don't really know what the constant would be without any additional information, uh, but whatever the constant is, remember if b is a constant, its derivative would be 0, so uh, there's nothing after the negative 2 in the derivative. So what that means is that there isn't a single answer here, there's a whole, th they're called a family of functions whose uh, derivative is negative 2. And so to draw the original function, I would just have to draw a line with a uh, um, a, a slope of negative 2. This, remember y equals mx plus b, that's the slope of this original function. And so this is actually the function that goes through the origin has a slope of negative 2. I know it has a slope of negative 2 because if I start, for example, here and go right 1, I go down 2. Remember rise over run, or I go down 2 and over 1. Down 2 and over 1. So I know this line has a slope of negative 2. Now we could draw any other line that has a slope of negative 2. And all that's changing here is uh, the y-intercept. I've drawn this one with a y-intercept of 4. It's parallel to this one, so it's a slope of negative 2. I've drawn this one with a y-intercept of negative 3. So either of those graphs could be the original function or any other line that's parallel to these three. In B, the original function is a line, uh, kind of similar to this one, but this was a constant uh, uh, derivative was equal to negative 2. This is the line, uh, now the y-intercept is 4 and has a slope of negative 2 again. So, because negative down 2 to the right 1, down 2 to the right 1, that's the slope. So the derivative, this is the derivative, its equation would be a negative 2x plus 4. That's the equation of that line.
So again, to get the original function, that's the derivative. We want the original function. You have to think of what would I differentiate to get negative 2x plus 4? And the, so the original function, it's negative x squared that you differentiate to get, to get negative 2. You're kind of doing the power rule in reverse here. Um, remember, when I differentiate negative x squared, the 2 comes down in front. That's the power rule part. And so that's where the negative 2 comes from. And then we subtract 1 from the exponents. That's why there's just an x to the first here. So actually, to do the, the differentiation rule in reverse, what you'd actually do is take that 2 and put it up here. Okay, and so uh, and then you actually uh, you actually end up dividing out the two. That's why it's just a negative one there. But anyway, it's negative x squared that you would differentiate to get negative two x. Uh, what do I differentiate to get four? Well, it have to be four x because the derivative of any number times uh, any constant times x is just the number. So four x differentiate gives you four. The plus c in the end is the same idea as over here there could be some constant on the end without additional information we don't know what that constant is so I'll just call it plus c and whatever the constant is is different derivative is zero now <clears throat> this is the graph of a parabola and so I know it's a downward opening parabola because of the negative here so it would look something like this now um, if remember the blue function is a derivative the y values all the way along here are positive they're above the x-axis and so if the derivative is positive that means for the original function it must be an increasing function think back to what we did in the previous page so all the way along right up to that point right there the derivative would be, po po would be positive of course at that point the tangent line would be horizontal and so the derivative would be zero so that's why straight down here below at two the derivative has a value of zero there's a like a y value zero but it's actually the derivative not just y the derivative turns to be negative here and because the uh, derivative values are below the x-axis and so that's why past this point to the right the uh, graph is going down it's a decreasing function any tangent line you drew or any derivative value would be would be negative there because the again the derivative has a negative value down here of course this point where x is 2 the derivative value is 0 there so there should be a horizontal tangent line there's a minimum or maximum point there if we take a look at uh, graph number c graph number c uh, c is a letter i guess um, the original function here is this parabola and so this is the parabola oh yeah I'm, i forgot to be here um, it's not just this one specific function parabola it could be any other function who is just a vertical translation of the original one so I've drawn this one just lower uh, it still has a maximum point there okay so this could easily be or any other parabola that has the same axis of symmetry really okay on to uh, C here now <clears throat> this graph is the graph of the uh, basic parabola and there could be a constant here but I'll show you why it's just one uh, x minus 1 squared the uh, axis symmetry is uh, x equals 1 here because uh, straight up and down through 1 now the reason I know there's a constant of 1 in front here is because if you start at the vertex and go to the right 1 you go up 1 if you go to the right 2 remember 2 squared is 4 so that's how I know that it's just x minus 1 squared there's not an additional stretch or compression here now if we expand this out x minus 1 squared or x minus 1 times another x minus 1 is x squared minus 2x plus 1 so that's the derivative now what do you differentiate to get a quadratic function well it's a cubic remember when you differentiate the power goes down one each time so the the uh, original function must be a cubic or and of course have a cubic shape I'm not going to get in, into all the derivatives from now on but um, remember this is the graph of the derivative notice that the um, derivative values are positive all along here and then they actually touch at zero and then they start getting back into the positives again so no negative derivatives here at all so this graph is completely increasing uh, it's never decreasing so it should look something like this so positive derivative right around right down to here 
So the graph is increasing, increasing, increasing. And there's this point where the tangent line would be horizontal. Okay, uh, derivative value is zero there. And then the, the derivative starts increasing again. So the graph gets steeper and is increasing more and more. So that's the kind of uh, uh, function that we would have in C. And of course, we can do a vertical translation. We can draw it higher, but still um, increasing along here and then increasing again. Similar idea in, in D. Yeah, I drew my uh, one function there. So the um, values for the derivative are negative all the way along to that point. So the original, so that means that the original function is decreasing all the way along there. So decreasing, 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 decreasing to this point. Notice the derivative is zero there. So that means there has to be a local minimum or maximum point here. The tangent line would be horizontal for the original function. And then from where x is 1 to 3, this little tiny hump here, the derivative is positive. So that means that from this point to that point, the function is increasing, it's going up. Uh, another horizontal tangent line here, so this is actually a local maximum point. Uh, derivative is zero there. And then the derivative goes back to being negative again. So past that to the right, the uh, a negative deriv derivative, of course, means that the function is decreasing. And of course, again, I could draw any vertical translation of that. So long as um, it lines up vertically with it, uh, that's another graph that could represent the original function. Uh, last example on uh, this page, uh, we're asked to draw a graph of a function with the following properties. So the derivative is greater than zero, which means it's increasing, uh, where x is less than negative two, so it's to the left of negative two, and where x is greater than three, so, so to the right of three. And then the derivative is negative, or it's decreasing between negative two and three. So what those first two statements means on the graph is this. It's increasing to the left of negative two, so that's that first part here, and then greater than three. So that's where x is three, so it's increasing towards that way. And then it's uh, a negative derivative between negative two and three. So between negative two and positive three here, it's decreasing, so it goes increasing, decreasing and then increasing again. And we're told that f of 1 is 2, so that actually is telling us an ordered pair that the point 1, 2 is on the function. So uh, it goes increasing, then decreasing, and then back to increasing again, and of course we want to go through that point. So the graph would have to look something like this. Uh, to the left of negative 2, it's increasing, so it's increasing, 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 all the way along here, and then it goes decreasing from 2 to 3, negative 2 to 3, so decreasing through here goes to that point, and then uh, it starts increasing again. So that's the kind of graph uh, it would have to look like. Now of course you could do a vertical stretch of that, um, you could make this steeper, but it would have to have that general cubic kind of shape in order to satisfy all these conditions. So that's how you can draw a graph uh, given characteristics which involve the derivative. And that's the end.